Hello, everyone. Hi, Lena. Hello, friends. Welcome back. Happy 2024. Hi, Dev. Lovely to see you, my friends. We are so excited to be with you today. Welcome, welcome. My name is Chef Jenny, and I'm going to be your instructor today. And welcome to Homemade Cooking. Love to see you all. Seeing some returning friends. Hopefully, we've got a lot of new friends here as well. I, of course, am not here by myself. I've got my trusty co-pilot, Christina, running the chat. Hello, Christina. We missed you guys. We're so happy to be back in the kitchen with you. We're just so. not the same happy without you all. We, we need you guys. We don't know where we are in the world without you. You're, you're our grounding center. It's wonderful to see you all. If you're willing to share your cameras, love to see the cameras if you guys are OK sharing it. Definitely want to love seeing your beautiful faces. Hi. And then if you're OK, want to ask questions during class, we also encourage you to share your cameras then too, because um, we appreciate seeing your, all your wonderful faces. Christina, how is your new, how's your new year going? I am very, very into this, the holidays falling on like Mondays. Yeah. Like it just yeah. makes, it just like that lead up is so much less stressful because you got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then. It just makes sense. Well, and I feel like we're at this tipping point where next year it's going to be on a Tuesday. Okay, still a long weekend. But then once you get to Wednesday, things get confusing. There's nothing more chaotic than a Wednesday Christmas or a Wednesday New Year's Eve. That's not right. It, that's, we need to talk. I don't know who we email about that. Um, we ha I have very little power. They only let me do this. So I don't know who I would contact. But I would like, like, if Christmas was always on a Monday or New Year's, who would uh, it? It's the dream. That, How about you, Jenny? How was your New Year's holiday festivus? I mean... I don't, we're off from Seattle, y'all. We're here live from downtown Seattle right now. We are unseasonably frigid weather, which you think wet, but you don't think below freezing, and that's where we are. We're not really doing great. Um, it's, it's salting our driveways. What is that? We don't know. So, it's true. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Um, so respect to anyone in the Midwest right now, anyone in the South, Chile, all of it. Um, as everyone's getting up here, I, I think we've got most of our people in the room now. I'm so excited to introduce our guests today. Our friend, guests sound so for our friends, our, our best exactly. friends maybe? Pretty yes. much. We've got the amazing American Diabetes Association today. We've got Molly and we've got Stacy here. Please welcome them, give them a big round of applause. We love them. They are doing the real work at the American Diabetes Association. We paired, probably the, one of the sponsors we pair with the most, our friends who we work with the most during classes. And um, we're Instagram official. We love them. Oh, yeah. Relationship status absolutely confirmed on so, all socials. So, yeah, we love doing these classes with them. And um, we did so many in 2023. I think it's only fitting that we're kicking off 2024 by having them here. So please welcome them again. And then they are here to answer your questions. So we're gonna engage with them live um, throughout the class and talk to each other, but they're also here to answer any questions you have, throw them in the chat. This is so special to have a registered dietitian at your fingertips, especially kicking off the year. Um, I know we're all very health focused right now, we're trying to, you know, maybe I, Butter happened at my house in December. Chocolates, yes. rain, marshmallow. I mean, I we had an accidental fudge making on Christmas Eve, and it haunted us the rest of the week. Like we were not right because we were just like, it juiced is a, up on fudge. Fudge is a big commit. It's um, it, it it really something you can't just sprint. Like you need to be ready for fudge. I should have given it. I should have done more neighborly giving because mm, we just had all this fine. fudge and then we ate it. But it was fine. It was delicious, actually. I feel like giving away fudge is a first week of December activity. <laughs> The day before Christmas, all bets are off. It's yours. That state that stays with you. Thanks for validating. <laughs> right, Debbie? Yeah, you guys know. Um, if anyone's cooking along with us, raise your hand. Anyone? Uh, Lena, you are great. Okay, a couple wonderful friends. All right. Well, I don't even think I've talked to you about what we're making today. We are making fried chicken and green beans air fryer chicken, but still fried chicken. 
I think this is a perfect way to kick off the year. There is so much information bombarding us right now about what is health and how to be healthy. And I hate that so much of it tends to center around elimination. That is not what we're about today. We're about celebrating food and celebrating good choices and learning about all the ways we can pivot recipes to make them a little healthier and a little more mindful. And that's what really great um, quality eating is all about. Not eliminating yourself. We're not limiting ourselves. We're having all those great flavors of fried chicken, but we're just making a few tweaks along the way. So I do want to start off um, directing you all to diabetesfoodhub.org. We'll put that in the chat. Please, please, please go there. They have incredible recipes. So if you are thinking about eating healthier throughout the year and wanting to start January off on a really good start, it can be overwhelming. Uh, all the recipes are there. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, desserts, snacks, they've got it all. And good smoothies. I mean, amazing stuff. I love that I can search for an ingredient. Like, yes. I have a rutabaga. I have a half a chicken breast. Like, and they will, like, tell me where to go. Let me tell you about the, the Diabetes Food Hub search bar. It is up here. It is top notch. I, I'm not going to call out anyone, but there, you all know there are f search bars on certain websites where, where it's, my hair starts falling out. So it's not working for me. Their, their, their search bar for recipes and greed, top notch. Worth the visit just for that. It's like the opposite of an email inbox search, oh, like where like they're yes. like, you've never sent an email. But then, yeah, diabetesfoodhub.org is right. the best. Right. There's a tone in the email search bar. <laughs> There's a tone when it's like, I don't think you ever had this. Yeah. So we're going to get cooking. We're going to kick it off again. Christina's here to answer any questions you have. Stacy and Molly are here to answer any questions you have. And I'm here as well. And I love talking and engaging you with how, throughout the class. So let's get going. Y'all ready? Let's get this New Year's 2024 energy going. All right, let's do it. Starting off with chicken breast. So that's, we're starting off with our chicken. I've got a chicken breast here. We're doing one pound of chicken breast. There's so much variation in size. I don't want to give you not a number of cutlets or a number of strips. What we're looking for here is a pound, and then that's four servings. So a lot of times now, breasts are bigger, and they can, two breasts can usually get you there to a pound. So I am going to do mine in strips here. So I'm actually going to take my knife, really sharp knife, now is the time to get your knives sharpened in January, February, post-holidays. This is probably when they're going to be really dull. A sharp knife is actually a safer knife. And I'm just going to saw across the middle here and try to kind of cut this in half. And then with these fillets, I'm going to cut these guys in half lengthwise. So I'm basically making giant strips. It really doesn't matter how you cut this as long as what you need to keep in mind is keep it the same size because if they're all the same size they all cook at the same rate and as long as you're giving yourself a four ounce portion then that's what we want so i've got my chicken breast here and i'm going to switch these over to my pan and i'm just going to give my hands a quick little wash here and rinse these off are you a strip person christina my family is. They love that, like, tender adjacent. Like, oh, tender if it's a strip, adjacent. they're like, okay. So I think it's like a we. it's, I don't know. They associate good things with tender. So anything that shape, they're like, I will try it. I feel like tender adjacent is a state of mind. And that's probably where I'm at about 90% of the time is tender adjacent. <laughs> So, word, love that. We need, you need to get that on a t-shirt, Ten, tender Jason. The real ones will know. <laughs> All right, so I've got um, um, my strips here. We're going boneless and we're going skinless. We definitely don't want to include that skin because that's where there can be a lot of fat. And honestly, I, in strip form, I don't want all of the, um, I, I'm not a big fan of the skin. I don't know if that's controversial. There might be, I know there's some die hard skin people out there, but for fried chicken, I kind of like it skinless. So well, I don't know that there's a way that there's enough skin to go around. So I'm with you, like skinless on the 
on the fillet. Yeah, for a yeah, for a fillet for a tender. I no, I mean, this is one where you're all 100% on board or absolutely not. Kind of like mayonnaise. I feel like chicken skin is one of those polarizing things. Throw it in the chat. Are you a skin person or not? If you're not, I promise you, these got so much flavor to them, you won't even notice. So we've got some buttermilk here. I'm gonna add a little hot sauce. Add to your liking. I don't think for as much chicken as we have, this is gonna be overly spicy, but I know better than to chef explain to you all your heat tolerance. I know that's a very personal thing and you know what it is at this point. I like a little kick in my chicken here. So I've got these guys and then I'm just gonna put my strips in here to start marinating. We don't need a long uh, marinating period. We're only gonna go about 15 minutes here. I wouldn't do these overnight because you actually can over marinate chicken. Chicken, if it's over marinated, can get almost spongy. That's the best kind of descriptor I would say with over marinated chicken. Um, not a very appetizing descriptor for chicken is spongy. So I, I love that this goes so quick that I don't need to do it two days in advance. I mean, Thanksgiving wasn't that long ago. I'm still triggered from like the 48 hour brining process. So this is, 15 minutes, 100%. These are the January vibes I'm wanting. Uh, did you just say 48-hour brining happened yeah, at your house? because I do dry brine. Whoa. We're going to have to come back to that. To okay, that's a whole other class, everyone. A whole other class. I mean, we'll get into it. So I'm tossing my breast around here in the buttermilk. Buttermilk, despite its name, its deceptive name, is actually very low calorie. It's compared to all the dairies because it's the leftover process from butter making. So all the fats in the butter, so we've got this really um, low fat, or even you can do non-fat sometimes, buttermilk. So I've got that here, 15 minutes. We're gonna let her go and it's gonna be fantastic. And it's gonna, that acid in the buttermilk a lot of times it's cultured. So that means that there's bacteria in the buttermilk, kind of like yogurt making, where it's really acidic. And that acid is gonna tenderize our chicken as it sits there and marinates. So the little hot sauce and that little kind of um, acidity is gonna give us flavor in our chicken, but it's also tenderizing it as it goes. Love that. I love a duel. I love something that does the duel. So I'm going to just take my chicken away here. Perfect. 15 minutes. And while that's marinating, I'm going to work here on our coating. So this is where this breading, we want to save on a lot of, eliminate, try to eliminate all those carbs that you can get. So first thing here is we have some cornmeal which I love. I love that we've got cornmeal. I love cornmeal coated chicken, cornmeal coated catfish, cornmeal coated anything in, sign me up. We also have a little secret ingredient here of some corn cereal, corn flake cereal. Try not to get one that's frosted. I don't, I think we all know that, but it's the new year. We've got foggy brains. Let's just reiterate, we don't want frosted cereal. We just want some corn cereal here. And then you can use a food processor to pound it or to grind it. But I love doing this with a rolling pin. It's great to get the kids involved in cooking. Just in a plastic bag, I'm just gonna lightly pound it and start going here. Stacy, I would love to hear from you. I initially saw cornflake cereal in here and thought, that's an interesting addition. Is that okay for us to eat? Well, bring us in why this is okay with our, thinking about our carbs. Well, yeah, because you're only using a little bit, right? And yeah. it's providing that extra crispy um, kind of texture beyond the, the cornmeal. Um, and you know, it, it, it saves you carbs because you're, you're having a blend of the cornmeal plus the corn flakes, um, uh, flake syrup. Um, so yeah, it gives you that crispy texture uh, without adding a lot of extra carbs. 
And then what health benefits do we get from corn milk? Because I don't think people realize that it's got a lot of positive um, benefits to it. Well, it's a whole grain, yeah. right? Because you know, they're, they're frying in the whole corn. So it is um, a whole grain, and we need to have 48 grams of, of the whole grain a day. Um, so that helps to contribute to that. Um, and it's just a, an opportunity, right, to add a little extra yeah. nutrition uh, and not have to, to you know, go wild and crazy to find another ingredient. I, I think, how great is Stacy, everyone? I love it. This is, feels so indulgent that we have a nutritionist here. You can just ask whatever questions. Throw it in the chat, y'all. Do not let this opportunity go to waste. That was perfect. And I think that's worth reiterating. If y'all missed it, corn meal is a whole grain. So when we talk about eating healthy and needing to get those whole grains, I think instantly people think of something whole wheat, oatmeal, corn is a whole grain. I love Polenta. That. My Italian people, they knew. They said, we know what to do with this. Let's make some polenta. They knew. And, and plus, for those that are eating gluten-free, you know, it gives an alternative that's gluten-free. That's a fantastic point. Yeah, this whole breading, because it's cornmeal and corn flakes. I mean, always check your packaging. We always want to put that out there. Um, with that claimed, always check your packaging. But yeah, there's an easy way to make this not have gluten. So I love these vibes we're bringing in. Yes, this is still feeling indulgent. Amazing. Thank you, Stacey. We'll be hitting you back up shortly. I have so many questions. All right, our beautiful breading here. And then we've got some salt, some pepper, I believe a little garlic powder, and some paprika. If you were also me, I know we got the hot sauce, but if you want to add a little cayenne in here, you can. I usually have that in my breading. I think the biggest thing to think about with seasonings for this dish is you just want to make sure there's no added salt to it or added sugar. So make sure you look on your spices if you've got a mix there that that's not what you're adding. But cayenne adds a lot of flavor and you're not getting any sodium or sugar with it. So. I like a little I like a little cayenne in my breading. You could also do some dry thyme in here, smoked paprika to play around with it for sure. Christina, how's it going out there? There are burning questions oh, about my favorite kind. Yeah, is there another kind? Non-dairy buttermilk substitute challenge you. Dairy-free yogurts? There's a lot of plain, unsweetened, dairy-free yogurts out there. That mixed with a little water. So I'd say if you use, this is a third of a cup of buttermilk, you use a quarter cup of yogurt and thin it with a little water, 100%. Or th thin it with a little plant milk. You can do that um, if we're just looking for non-dairy. But again, you wanna be careful with the plant milks, make sure there's not added sugar or added salt to it. But um, Make sure and look for low fat options too. If you get into the dairy free, then you might start getting higher fat. So it's one of those things you kind of have to balance. Honestly, if you just want to use a little lemon juice, that's got some acid to it. A little lemon juice, a little water, nothing wrong with that. So nice. it's all about we're trying to reduce our sodium, we're trying to reduce our sugar and keep the fat low. So with that, you just this does get into reading nutrition facts labels and kind of making sure we're similar to what that buttermilk would be. I, I think you won that challenge, Jenny. Are we you done? You had like 57 no, options. No, green beans to make. All yeah, right. Okay, okay. So, someone like Cal Poly, no, food science department, that I did answer that correctly. I, would, I do want word to get back that I do remember things. Um, okay, so we got these guys going. Other spices, I really, I'm a big, on a big smoked paprika kick. So, um. Me too. Are you, there's just something, once you open up that little tin of Spanish smoked paprika, it's all possibilities are open. Now I'm adding it to everything. <laughs> Eggs, every, celery, everyone's getting a little bit of smoked paprika right now, so. It's in so many different kinds of cuisine, but it just adds this special mojo. Little, I mean, cumin's also a little very smoky. Um, 
I mean, Chipotle is smoky, so you can play around with this a lot. This is kind of a form. I think the biggest thing is to get the proportions of the cornmeal and the cornflakes right. But then after that, with your spices, have a little fun. Just keep that sodium out of it, and then we're good to go. So, air fryer. Who's got an air fryer at home? Yeah, we mixing around. Oh, we got a lot of us got air fryers. All right, well, let's Santa good to us this year. Did anyone get get an air fryer from Santa? So, I don't know if you could see here. I'm gonna do top down. This is a perforated basket. So there's holes in here with the air fryer. That means that there's heat coming down from the top and because there's holes in the bottom air is going to circulate around our chicken whatever food you put in there the air is going to circulate around it a benefit of this to compared to oven is that it's smaller and it heats up faster so it's great for easy quick cooking so if you're in the middle of the week and you're that, you're that close to just thinking about eating out, which I've been there, I know that, and you're really trying to use stuff up at home, it is nice to have an easier option, especially during the summer where you don't wanna heat up the whole house. The one thing with air fryer cooking that you have to keep in mind is you can't overcrowd the basket. So if we have to do two batches of chicken, we'll do two batches of chicken. But I can already look at the volume of this chicken. All this probably isn't gonna fit on the bottom. You don't wanna stack chicken on top of each other because the air is not gonna be able to circulate correctly and you're not gonna get very crispy chicken. Because of that air circulating, it creates a really nice, hot, consistent heat. So that's how food in there gets really, really crispy. If you don't have an air fryer, but you have a convection setting on your oven, do that. That's pretty much kind of like the same thing. If you don't have a convection oven, you can still use a regular oven. I would just put the heat setting, I'm setting this to 375 right now. I would put your setting up to 400. So you want to increase about 25 degrees your heat setting, and then probably go about five minutes longer in the oven. But as always, being the nerdy food scientist that I am. I always tell you all with protein, food thermometer it is the best way to know that you have hit the proper safe temp. So for these, we're looking for 165 degrees. So I am just going to go over here. You're gonna hear a fun beeping. And this one has digital pictures on it, which sign me up. I, this is the future, you all. We're li really living in it. So I am gonna go, we're gonna initially put these in for seven minutes and then flip them and then go seven to 10 minutes more until we hit that 165. So I'm gonna start this girl up and then I'm gonna start taking my tray. I'm gonna put a quick little spray on the bottom. They do now are making liners that can go for your air fryer basket that are perforated too, so it lets the heat go on, but then it keeps the bottom of your air fryer clean. Live your life, y'all. Whatever you need to do to get, get start cooking at home, do it. No apologies, all right? So we're, we're heading at, we're, we're cutting the time a little bit. I know this is still gonna be good. If you're cooking along with us, you can wait for the full 15 minutes, but we got green beans to make, I mean, lives to be saved, you know? So I'm gonna take my chicken in here. I kind of shook off the excess. And then I'm just gonna lay this in the bottom of my tray. We don't wanna to add too much moisture in there. So I am gonna shake this chicken. I think I'm gonna get probably three to four in. And that'll be my first batch. But it goes so quick that I definitely, in under an hour, could get two done. So get this guy coated. Put the second one in there. Did anyone with your mom growing up, or dad, whoever the cook was, have the breading in a paper bag, and then you rolled it up, and you were the one as a kid who got to shake it, <laughs> making dread. I got to do that, it was the best, yeah? I'm seeing some head nods. 
It feels like such a big responsibility as a kid. You're like, wow, they're trusting me with this. This is huge. It makes a loud noise. It's pretty nice. Agreed. It's definitely a like sneaky child labor in in the best way. Yeah, you're like, I think I'm ready for my own apartment now. I nailed this. <laughs> there's a there's a sense of confidence there. Okay. Ooh, that breading smells good. I'm definitely getting this hits of seasoning. So, do you see that? I'm full here. If I add any more, it's gonna overcrowd the pan and then that air is not gonna be able to circulate. So I'm gonna take a little of my spray, not one second, not three seconds. I'm gonna do a quick two seconds. One, two, huzzah! That little mist of oil is gonna help us get some nice, nice browning on it. And I'm gonna put this in and we'll start her. Yes, Christina, how are we doing out there? Can we go back to the beginning? Uh, Take it all the confirm. way back. I know, and the answer is of course we can. Um, you were so quick and efficient. The oh. breast that you showed, yes. you cut into four pieces. Yeah, so I cut it in half horizontally and then in half vertically. So each piece was is thinner thinner and then half piece of strip so it's a thinner strip so that's why i cut it in half almost like i was butterflying it i cut it in half horizontally you can just take each of your breasts and cut them in half and have thicker pieces i like a thinner tender bite so that's why i did that i yes, think please. the secret confusion might be that you had already done that to one breast before class i did. and then, so we have a total of eight pieces Yes, we Again, have a total size of size varies, pieces. but um, for us at the grocery store today, two chicken breasts was a pound, right? Yeah, and that always can vary. Not not all the breasts are the same, so they might cut. It. So those packages might all have two breasts in them. Some of them can be a pound and a half. Some of them can be three quarters of a pound. So always try to get in the habit of looking at it. You don't have to buy more to make it perfect pound you just have to keep in mind that one serving is four ounces four ounces of chicken so as long as you think okay my plate just needs to have four ounces of chicken do whatever arithmetic you got to do but we just don't want triple the breading and a third of the chicken and then you're using all that's where we're gonna get that that is something i would pull and i want to be vulnerable and tell you that is something i would do so we're trying to be mindful i mean i let me be vulnerable with you all i do do tricky arithmetic like that sometimes to get more breading in my life but we're being mindful and we're trying to be responsible so i'm not doing any of that arithmetic so i'm going to be vulnerable with you that i'm not doing chicken math but i really appreciate like things like it should be the size of your palm or right. smaller you know like that's kind of my math. I mean I don't read so good but when it comes to cheating on carbs my brain comes alive and I I'm somehow a Mensa member I've got like a 180 IQ if I can figure out a way to get more candy in my life this is but we all have those urges. That doesn't mean we're bad people or there should be any shame. It's understandable. We're coming off the holidays when we're having midnight fudge parties. I mean, yeah, that's the kind of mindset we're in. So it's okay to be kind to ourselves going into January. More than okay. Required. Required to be kind to yourselves and be mindful and that repeating healthy, mindful cooking over and over again, it does get easier. It doesn't feel overwhelming. And... Be kind to yourself. We never, ever, ever want you all to feel shame or beat yourself up after these classes. Cooking, rule 101. Cooking is supposed to be fun. Eating is supposed Amen, to sister. be fun. It is not supposed to feel like a chore. If it feels like a chore, you're not going to keep up with it. And that's what we're all about at Homemade, is that it is so st supposed to be fun. So I got some green beans here as my chicken's heating up. I got my oven set to 400. I do wanna do a little note on the recipe that says 450 degrees. From my experience, that might be a little hot. If you go 450, maybe just do like five minutes because these aren't huge pieces, chunks of potato. These are thin green beans. They're washed and they're trimmed. We trim the little ends just because they can be tend to be a little tougher and fibrous. So I trimmed them. 
I've got a little bit of olive oil in here and some salt and some freshly ground pepper. And I'm just gonna toss it here together. The reminder always is when cooking more mindful um, dishes, is that if you use really good ingredients, your food's gonna taste really fresh, really bright, and you don't miss all that salt. You don't miss dredging and fat. And one of those tricks, it can sound really simple, but it's so important, is using fresh ground pepper. Fresh ground pepper has such a brighter, deeper flavor to me than pre-ground. So if you can get fresh pepper, go for it, please. Can't recommend enough. You also feel like you're at a fancy restaurant. I used to think like 11 year old Jenny thought the epitome of class was if you were at a restaurant where they ground fresh pepper on your salad. I was like, well, I've made it. This is are you saying that that's not the epitome of class? I know. I still hold it as, I still hold it as, wow, they, I mean, they must be really happy it's my birthday because look where they took me. Like, that's still, if a Michelin star doesn't grind pepper on my cell, I'm like, I don't know what this place is. What are they doing here? So um, get yourself some fresh ground pepper. I find a little trick. Buy yourself a beautiful pepper grinder. I've, I have one that I love that's made out of wood and it's beautiful and I love having it displayed next to my stove. So if you have a pepper grinder that looks pretty, you're gonna wanna reach for it. So um, please spend as much as you want. I, t I th tell you it's okay. To go, go for it. Forget all the, the debt from <laughs> holiday spending. Buy yourself a fancy pepper grinder, y'all. Totally worth it. Okay, green beans, oven. We're gonna start off with 10 to 15 minutes, somewhere in there. I think once I flip my chicken and look at it and put it back in, then I'll go and give my green beans. I don't want to dehydrate them where they're like veggie straws. I don't wanna burn them. I want them to still have a little bit of firmness to them, but have some of that moisture evaporated off and have them be a little tenderized. So, Let's work on a little dressing for this. Now in the recipe, you can have a garlic clove in there, but because our heat is kind of on the higher end and we're roasting, I don't want my garlic to burn. Have you all experienced the flavor of burned garlic? It's so disgusting. You can't get rid of it. There, there is nothing, it, you, need to ex you need a priest to exercise it out of your time. It is, it is, I, I don't know what is happening. I mean, I do from a food science standpoint, but it is, there's nothing that can describe. And I have burned garlic and then continued with the dish thinking, oh, be okay, and it's never okay. It just taints the rest of your dish. So if you do burn garlic, as, as sad as it is, you gotta stop, step away, and kind of restart things. As in like, get a fresh pan. That's how bad burned garlic is. It Agreed, and it's like your home is marked. Like you smell like it, no. the kitchen smells like it. But you're right, I can't be optimistic. I just need to start over. I always, I know this logically, but I always think I can fix it. I'm like, I could fix this. Well, you probably could, right? Well, I, maybe not that. Maybe with a whole bottle of wine, but I think at that point, we just got to start over. You know, hey, 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 let's not be judgmental. All right, got our chicken is smelling already. S aromas of a little garlic, a little crispiness. Green beans are going. This is one of my favorite ways to prepare green beans. We're gonna make a vinaigrette. So when the green beans come out, because they're gonna be warm, they're gonna suck up that vinaigrette and they're gonna get so much flavor in them. So it's almost like we're making a warm salad, like a green bean salad. One of my favorite ways to do this, you can also, instead of roast, blanch your green beans in water and then shock them in some ice water to stop the cooking and toss them in this dressing as well. So it kind of depends if you want hot roasted green beans or if you want a cold crisper green bean. All the green beans are good, I love green beans. I'm just gonna mince up one clove of garlic here. That usually means when I see that in a recipe, two to three cloves of garlic, do whatever you got it to. And then Stacy, talk to us about green beans. Why, why green beans? What? 
Why green beans? Title of my memoir, Why Green Beans? <laughs> Why green beans? Well, first of all, they're delicious. They're delicious. Uh, yeah, second of all, they're a non-starchy batch. And so for folks that are looking for, especially people with diabetes, we recommend folks have half of their plate as a mm. non-starchy batch. You know, mm. first of all, they're, you know, they're delicious, but they're low carb. And that, you know, really helps to balance out the plate by having, you know, our diabetes uh, plate method. Yeah. Half from, of the plate is non-starchy veg, a quarter is from your protein, and a quarter is from a starch or starchy veg um, or fruits. Um, and so that it just enables you to kind of look at portions. But quite frankly, we all consume, you know, fewer vegetables than, they, than we should be doing. Yeah. And what a great way Guilty. to be able to, to get in more vegetables is having a delicious Betty Brat like this straight out of the oven. Yeah, love that. Thank you so much. I That's great that the really, I, I love green beans. I'm team green bean. I really, I always feel like the sauteed green beans or the roasted green beans on the Thanksgiving or the holiday table is a beacon. It's a, it's an oasis in a desert. It's like, oh, something green. Yes. Um, green beans are great. I also want to encourage you, if you cannot find green beans in the store right now, frozen green beans are great. They're fantastic. Defrost them in the fridge in a colander and let that water run out. Because if you are going to roast them, you that water is going to interfere with you kind of getting that um, roasted color on them so you're just going to steam them more which maybe that's what you want so go for it but roasted veggies or frozen veggies and frozen fruit i feel like get a really bad stigma around them that somehow you're not really cooking but when they're picked at their peak and just kind of frozen in time, that's what frozen veggies are. So no stigma, no shame. I love frozen veggies and fruit. I use them all the time. If you're talking canned, that's when you start getting a lot of sodium in there. That's where you really need to look on the ingredient statement. So team, is there like a team frozen veggie shirt that's out there? I, I, I would wear it. That's all I'm saying. I think we've designed like a whole store of merch in this oh, class. Oh, we got to pull the trigger on these. These are be flying hotcakes. I mean, come on. All right. So garlic, I got a little Dijon mustard. Love Dijon mustard, a little pepperiness, kind of the basis of all vinaigrettes in my opinion. I've got some red pepper flakes and I've got some Splenda sweetener. But I do want to tell you that you do not have to use the sweetener if you don't want to. It's in here just to add a little balance of that saltiness and that acid vinegar, then to have a little sweetness. But if you don't have it or don't want it, this is still going to be the delicious without. A little bit of olive oil. And stir this around. I love the red pepper flakes in here. If you don't want the red pepper flakes, I hear you. Put some paprika in there. Or have you heard the good news about smoked paprika? I think we mentioned it earlier. <laughs> Try that. Yes. All right. And then champagne vinegar, which I love, adding that in here and whisking it in. Yes, Christina, talk to me. Okay. We heard you about these frozen veggies, but how do you get them crisp? Yeah. So what interferes with crispness with anything in the oven when you're roasting are two things. Water and overcrowding. And they're pretty much the same principle because while your food doesn't get crispy when you overcrowd the pan, that means you put too much stuff on your pan, the moisture doesn't have anywhere to go when it evaporates and you just ends up steaming the food next to it. So if you want really crispy vegetables in the oven, you need to make sure you have enough space on your pan. For this volume, this is, um, this is a large volume of green beans. I would almost use two pans. I use a little less on man mine no reason why you can't use two pans and then frozen again defrost in the fridge or defrost on the counter for like half an hour an hour and let it drain off the water take some paper towels or dish towel and really pat it dry if you get that moisture off the surface then that's gonna um, leave it for the ability to get really roasted and some color in the oven if you leave that moisture on, it's just gonna steam. Again, nothing wrong with steam, but that's why your food doesn't get really brown. It's overcrowding and not patting the moisture off. 
You know, I'm gonna taste this vinaigrette just to see, just to do a little quality control here. Let's try it out. Oh. Mustard, olive oil, vinegar, garlic. You could, there's nothing that wouldn't taste good on. A perfect vinaigrette. You could put that on a rubber tire. It would be fantastic. So we've got that. And it's time to look at our chicken, y'all. Flip it over. I, I'm very excited. Oh, look at that. We already have color on. Do you see that beautiful color? It's been eight minutes. So this is the magic of the air fryer. And I'm just flipping it. I honestly think we're almost there. I'm gonna temp it to see where we're at. But we are we are getting color on here. We're get, I mean, I can hear it. There's crispiness on here. So we didn't have to fry it. We're getting Christmas on here. Delicious. Oh, these look good. This might not be a day where I share. If I just stay on camera, no one else, if I eat the whole thing on camera, no one else can have some. Um, Luke, can you uh, take care of that for us? Take, take care of this. You're just going to see a technical difficulty sign. And let's see where we are. This is where temperature comes in. Oh, I'm almost there. I'm literally going to give it two more minutes. And we got chicken. I mean, 30 minutes we've been cooking? Kind of insane, y'all. Pretty good. Hit me with it, Christina. What do we got? Well, secretly I'm gonna hit up Stacy for what the word is on honey. Good, yeah. neutral, special, what you got? This is a good oh, one. It would help if my mic was on. Stacy, yeah. can you tell <laughs> us about um, what's the word on honey? Like what should we know? What should we do, etc.? What should we oh, do? Oh, honey. The question that was in the chat. Someone just yes. asked if they could swap in honey instead of the, the Splenda, yeah. the sweetener. And sure, if somebody was not needing to monitor their added sugar carbs, then yeah, there, you know, there's just a little bit of honey in the in the in the vinaigrette, you know, that okay. we could um, add. But that if somebody with with uh, diabetes was really needing to kind of watch those added uh, sugar carbs. The non nutritive sweet, you know, really enables them to get that sweet taste without yeah. adding um, the carbs uh, and the added sugar that would contribute to maybe spiking the blood sugar. And also, just to note, I tasted that vinaigrette. You could even use half the amount of Splenda that's in the recipe because it's plenty. So you're getting plenty of sugar and sweetness. You're getting that really rounded sweetness flavor from that amount. So just a pinch might even get you there because it has a high sweet point flavor on it. So yeah, right. Because you know, when you, when we're looking at how can we you know enjoy our vegetables, yeah. if, if that helps you, because maybe you're not a super big fan of green beans, or maybe you have somebody at the table that isn't, that may just help you know get them across the the taste threshold and and be able to enjoy them. Yes, <sighs> we have so many fun people cooking along today. Uh, if anyone's making this recipe, Lena, twenty bucks as you're making this. Oh, um, she's making it. She raised yeah. her hand. Um, cool. Erica, Holly, yes. oh, Vinaigrette, and Caitlin, you've got the whole crew in there. I'm sort of like, you know, everybody's working yeah. to make it. So if you ever want to show off your dish, just give me the See, signal. I just saw, Holly, are you making the vinaigrette right now? Is yep, that, yep. There's some whiskey. How did it taste to you? Have you tasted it? Tastes it good, right? That's that vinaigrette's got it's got some moves. I feel like you could put that on like a hundred things. You already said this, but I just want to reiterate. I like fish. We are in the Pacific Northwest. All the salmon around here, like that, just drizzled over fish. That I definitely. I'm a, a Sicilian girl. I love my broccolini. That would be really nice over broccolini. So. I'm just naming vegetables now. I, the point is, it's good on everything, all this stuff. All right, time to check my green beans. Let's see where we're at here. Oh, yeah. So for me, this was more than enough time. If you guys can see, I've got some browning here. Let's see your phone. Yeah, let me put this up. I've definitely got some browning, some color. It's sizzling. They're just starting 
just a slight shrivel to them as they cook and constrict. I don't want them to wither away into nothing. So the def the start of those little wrinkles is when you want to pull them. So I'm there. So definitely everyone's ovens are different. Some of them might be really tired post holidays. So you might need that full 20 to 25 minutes. But at 400, I only needed about 10 for me. So it's really something you've got to check and taste and see how you go. This is good for me. I'm gonna now pile these in the center here and pour my vinaigrette all over it. This also looks beautiful plated. If you're, I mean, bless y'all if you're doing any January hosting. I mean, that's super ambitious. I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm not sure I can see people until February after all the holidays, but like good on you if you are. So this is a really nice, easy, entertaining meal entertaining side dish that looks beautiful on a platter. And then if people are kind of watching what they're eating, again, gluten-free, all the stuff, you can keep it, it, it satisfi satisfies a lot of people who might be at your dinner. Do you see how it's glistening? These are just soaking up the vinaigrette and that garlic is warming. I'm just getting a hit of garlic right now. It smells <sighs> delicious like all good things do you guys want to want to watch me eat a ton of chicken and green beans let's go all right green beans here and then come on look at that do you see that color on there oh she's gonna talk to me because she doesn't like stuff on her it's actually is it the green beans come on green beans who is the green beans New stove, who dis? All right, I've got my plate here. So our goal, half that plate, green beans. The green beans are smelling the best, right? I mean, that chicken smells incredible, but that vinaigrette, yeah, good stuff. And then chicken coming on board here I mean they're all my favorite just like children but I think these two are maybe the best ones come on how is that for a January dinner who's not liking this we've got our chicken We've got our beautiful green beans. Let's try to see this ad camera here. Isn't that beautiful? These chicken tenders look amazing. I'm so excited. Quality control. Quality control. Ooh, very nice. Holly, nicely Holly, done. Holly, oh my gosh, beautiful. Ooh, look at, and lean up with the garnish. Nice job. garnish on it, of course. Okay, Erica, Caitlin, we're here for you. I'm waiting for someone you. to fresh grind pepper on it to make oh it really gosh. fancy. Extra bonus points oh, yeah. for grinding the pepper. <laughs> all right, I'm going in. Lena, Holly, I'm stirred. Cheers to you all. Let's see. I'm getting, I'm getting green beans and I'm getting chicken in this bite. Everyone's getting some of it. Let's see here. Cheers to you guys. Cheers to 2024. Mmm. It sounds like it's terrible. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> it's the chicken breading. We were really decisive with our seasonings in there. So it is hitting every fried chicken bone in my body of that the garlic, the paprika, like it's, you know that, I don't think it's a full, is it 13 spices and seasonings from the main chicken fried chicken chain? Do you know what I'm talking about? The secret recipe? I don't know them. We didn't, <laughs> we don't know them. We don't know her. We didn't need that much, but we, this vibe. And then the green beans are the secret star of this. We just sucked up all of that vinaigrette. So each bite is so flavorful, but I'm still tasting the green bean. Ah, what do 
way to start off the year. Fantastic recipe. If you're not cooking along with us, I hope you're inspired to make this in the next couple of weeks because 10 out of 10. Can't recommend enough. Delicious. Friends, I want to thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We have missed you. Let's never not talk that long again. We were dying without you. So next week, we're back in the mode of classes. Next Tuesday, we have a roast haddock with an herb crumb on it. Going to be amazing. So hope to see you all there. We once again want to shout out the American Diabetes Association. Please give Molly and Stacy a huge round of applause for being here. Not all heroes wear capes, y'all. Some of them are making sure we're eating the right amount of sugar, and we appreciate it. We thank you. Once again, I'm going to direct you to diabetesfoodhub.org. Incredible recipes, eating, being healthy, e eating mindful. It's a state of mind. It should always be celebratory, never any shame. And this food site, it's got all the stuff. So I really hope you go over there and check it out. And I want to thank Christina for being my co-host. Um, it is not a hard job, and I'm so happy to be here with the homemaders. Look. And I see in Erica's kitchen yes. that someone is stealing green beans. Caitlin got caught up. Gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. Look at Look how crispy. Look at the tendies. Oh, my gosh. Post it to the gram. I'm seeing the phones out. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so thank you all for being here again, diabetesfoodhub.org. Until we see you next time, homemaders, keep on cooking. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye.